Okay, wow, EuroLeague fans, are you ready for this? We are diving into a game that, frankly, uh, has everyone scratching their heads. Olympiacos, I mean, they had the lead. It felt like they were in control. And then it all just unraveled. Hmm. What happened? You're not wrong to be puzzled. It's the question everyone in Greece is asking. This wasn't just, you know, a regular loss for Olympiacos. This was a total collapse. And the, work. the sports pages, they are drowning in analysis. Everyone's trying to make sense of it all. And that's where we come in, right? We've got all those articles right here ready to, like, really break it all down. We're going way past the box score. Think of it like, um... We're your sports detectives. We're digging through all the evidence to understand not just that Olympiacos lost, but the HOW and like the WHY behind this EuroLeague shocker. Okay, I love that. Sport detectives. I'm in. So let's set the scene a little bit for our listener, okay? Imagine you're courtside in Istanbul. The atmosphere is electric. Olympiacos is on the road facing Enoto Luifes. These teams, they have a history. So going into this matchup, what were expectations like? The articles I read, they all paint this picture of, you know, like, two titans going head-to-head. Ephes, they're the former champs, a team you never, ever underestimate. And Olympiacos, while they're a strong team, they really needed to prove they could win on the road. Especially against a powerhouse like Ephes, you gotta figure the pressure was on. Yeah, for sure. And they seem to be handling that pressure, at least in the first quarter, I gotta say. Yeah. From what I'm seeing, everything points to Olympiacos putting on a clinic early on. They came out firing. Defense, airtight forcing Efes into bad passes, turnovers left and right, and Vizenkov, unstoppable. Like, at one point, Eif was down by 15 points. It looked like it was going to be a blowout. 15 points. Yeah. That's a statement, especially on the road. Okay, okay so for those listening, picture this. Efes is reeling, the crowd is stunned, mm. and then somehow the tide starts to turn. What that, changed? Well, this is where all the Greek articles seem to agree on one thing. Shane Larkin happened. He came off the bench for Efes and just completely shifted the energy. Okay, so we've got a classic hero moment here. Mm -hmm. The sixth man comes in, sparks the team, and suddenly Olympiakos is on the back foot. Exactly. And honestly, some of the descriptions of Larkin's performance are pretty amazing. One article called him magical, and you know what? They're not exaggerating. But it wasn't just his scoring, though that was impressive. It was how he lifted Eves' entire game. Like his confidence just became contagious. That's interesting. So even with Larkin on fire... Olympiacos still managed to hold on to a lead going into the fourth quarter, which is exactly why those final minutes, they've got everyone talking. What went wrong for Olympiacos when it mattered most? In a word, mistakes. And not just any mistakes, we're talking critical turnovers in the most crucial moments. Three in the final 90 seconds, and two of them by Fournier. Now, you know me, I always look for the deeper context here, and what's so fascinating is that Fournier, he's known for his ball handling, for his, you know, composure under pressure. So for him to make those kinds of errors, that's like a huge red flag for me. Was it Afi's defense rattling him, or was it something more internal, you know? Like, did the pressure finally get to him? That, my friend, is the million-dollar question. And um, the articles do offer some clues. One analysis I saw pointed out that Coach Barnsokas, he had Fournier playing way more minutes than usual leading up to the game. So now you wonder, maybe fatigue played a factor. Or maybe, just maybe, those turnovers. They were like little cracks showing us a larger mental shift that was already happening within the Olympiacos team. It's like, yeah, those turnovers were just the tip of the iceberg, you yeah. know? Okay, so we're talking about a deeper issue here. Not just physical mistakes, but like a mental breakdown. Exactly. And you know what's interesting? A lot of the Greek articles, they seem to agree that Aphis just, they wanted it more. Like there was this feeling, you know, reading their analysis, that Aphis was playing with a real sense of desperation. This refusal to let the game slip away. Really? More than Olympiakos? The team that, let's remind everyone held the lead for most of the game. That's a pretty big statement. It is. It is a big statement. But it's hard to deny when you really look at the details. These articles are full of stories about EFIS players, like diving for loose balls, battling for every rebound. They were just playing with a different level of intensity. You know what I mean? Yeah, I get it. It's like that saying, leave it all on the court. Exactly. And it's like Larkin's energy. It was contagious or something. One article, I think it was Sport 24, they even compared EFIS to a pack of wolves, you know, like sensing weakness in their prey. Whoa, okay, that's a that's a pretty intense image. Right. And you know what else is interesting? Eves, they've been struggling a bit before this game. Like, they weren't playing with the same dominance they had last season. So this comeback, this could be huge for them, a sign that they're, you know, rediscovering that championship form. Oh, wow. So this isn't just about one win. It's like a whole narrative shift for Eves. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
not exactly what Olympiacos wants to see, I'm sure. Definitely not. And, you know, it's easy to get caught up in the excitement of a comeback win, but I think it's important that we don't forget about Olympiacos here. This loss, I mean, this one had to sting, but it might be the wake-up call they needed, right? So you're saying sometimes you learn more from a loss than you do from a win? 100%. It forces you to, you know, really look at yourself in the mirror, identify those weaknesses, and then you come back stronger. Yeah, that's the beauty of sports, isn't it? There's always a lesson, always a story behind the scoreboard. Okay, but before we get to our final thoughts, I want to circle back to something you mentioned earlier. Those turnovers by Fournier. Did the articles give any more insight into what might have been going on with him in those crucial moments? Was it just bad luck? You know, that's what I love about these deep dives. We get to really, like, zoom in on those hidden details that often get missed, you know? And um, in this case, there was one article, I can't recall which one off the top of my head. Anyway, it offered a really interesting perspective on Fournier's performance. Okay, I'm hooked. Tell me more. So, remember how we were talking about Aoife's energy, that pack of wolves mentality? Yeah, like I said, pretty intense. You know, right. So this journalist, he pointed to a specific moment in the fourth quarter where Fournier was bringing the ball up the court. And uh, all of a sudden, he's surrounded by three EFS players. Like, they were all over him, forcing him into this trap. Can only imagine the pressure. Yeah. And here's the kicker. According to this article, EFS hadn't used that specific defensive trap at any other point in the game. It was like they were saving it just for him, for that crucial moment. And when they finally unleashed it, well, it obviously threw Fournay completely off his game. Wow. It's like a coaching chess match. <laughs> So this wasn't just, you know, bad luck or a lack of focus on Fournier's part. This was a calculated move by Ephes that exploited a weakness and at the worst possible moment for Olympiacos. You got it. And that's why this game is so fascinating to break down. It was a battle of strategy, a battle of will. And in the end, Ephes just, they made the right plays at the right time. It just shows you how every possession, every single decision on the court, it all matters. It really makes you think, huh. Like, you see the final score, Ephes wins by two points, but the story of the game, the how it all went down, it's just so much more complex. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's what makes these deep dives so interesting, right? We're not just, like, watching the highlights. We're really digging into the nuances, those small choices that can make or break a game. Exactly. So for our listeners out there, maybe you're on your commute, maybe you're at the gym, wherever you are, what's the big takeaway from this whole thing? What's the story of this game? You know, if I had to pick one thing, it's that at its heart, basketball is all about momentum and uh, psychology, right? Of course, talent matters. Strategy is huge. But sometimes, you know, it's that intangible drive to win, that refusal to back down that makes all the difference. Ephes had that in spades this game. Yeah, they were hungry for that win. And, you know, I think that's a lesson that goes way beyond basketball. Never underestimate, you know, the power of just pure resilience, digging deep, especially when things get tough. Couldn't agree more. And you know what? On the flip side, it's also about staying focused, right? Never letting your guard down, no matter how comfortable a lead might seem. Yeah, Olympiacos definitely learned that lesson the hard way this time. They did. They did. But, you know, sometimes a loss like this, as tough as it is, it can be more valuable than a win, you know? It forces you to reevaluate, see where the cracks are, and come back even stronger. Totally. So for Olympiacos, this isn't the end, right? Just a bump in the road, a chance to learn and come back swinging. Exactly. And who knows? For Ephes, this might be the start of a whole new chapter, you know? A real turning point in their season. Man, I love it. What a game. What a deep dive. Okay, before we wrap up, one last thought for you all out there to ponder. We've really looked at this game from every angle, but the question I keep coming back to is, was this a fluke win for Ephes or a sign of things to come? Only time will tell, but one thing's for sure. This EuroLeague season just got a whole lot more interesting. 